Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and you have seen me use countless Wi-Fi modules abused as a microcontroller for the project because those were the microcontrollers I could get. But it's time to learn about how real Wi-Fi modules work. And I've recently been to Electronica and I've seen something that might change the way how we use deep sleep and Wi-Fi modules and IoT stuff. So let's explore the DA16200 and build the prototype for my own alarm system. Everybody who follows me at least for a little bit of time knows that I'm a big proponent of open source software and hardware. I think there should be an open source variety of every single thing that is there. So you're not locked in by any brand, vendor or certain terms. So in case some brands get funny and there are a lot of them that begin with A who really like to go really weird with the license and to ruin the products and I can't use them anymore in any sensible way. So you have to switch to open source and be happy over again. And for hardware, well, there are a lot of open hardware alternatives for some things, but not for all of them. And I always wanted to have an alarm system, but I hate that they always connect to some cloud service and then they send your data to somewhere. And especially when you really need it, the internet connection just goes away. So your alarm system basically is not working and the components can't interact with each other. That's no good. I want to have an open source alarm system without any need for any cloud stuff, only locally. So the prototype, the most critical component of any alarm system, the actual sensors that send the data to somewhere, I want to use a DA16200 Wi-Fi module. I recently learned about it that it's the most energy efficient one out there. It takes the least amount of uh, current while in deep sleep and it says 35 milliamps in the data sheet. Well that's not that less. Like an ESP32 that I've used a lot of times takes the same amount in deep sleep. But there's a really, 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 really important difference. Prepare to have your mind blown. The DA16200 by Renesas slash Dialog Semiconductor can stay connected to the network while it's in deep sleep. That means in theory, you should be able to wake it up via network. So no wake up every seconds and then send a message to say that you're still alive. You can just let it sleep forever and ask it when you know, want to know something. So you can actually ask, how's your battery level? Are you still there? Are you working properly? And it will just answer. You can wake it up over the network, which is a game changer. It takes the same amount of current like any other Wi-Fi module, but it stays connected. So this is basically the thing that I want to explore with this prototype. Uh, let's hop on to KiCat and make a PCB. Welcome to my computer and KiCat. Let's look at the schematic I drew up. First thing, this is an ESP32S2. You don't have to need, uh, you don't have to use that one. That is basically a placeholder. In reality, you would use any cheap microcontroller. Simple little thing, AD Tiny, for example. Something you can get for cheap, just has to speak UART. Nothing fancy needed. Fact of the matter is, this is cheap at the moment. I, it is available, I can get it. It has native USB, so it's pretty easy for me for debugging to use that. It's cheaper to put that on the board than having a different microcontroller and a USB UART bridge separately. So that's what I'm gonna use. If I put this design into like a more production thing, I would replace this with an AT Tiny or something similar, something cheap. Then we have our power regulation, our USB-C connector, these are read switches. Uh, if we put that over into a board, then we get this thing here. Looking at it in 3D, we get this here. Of course, I'm missing the 3D models, but you can see here is where the components go. And on the other side, this is where the button cells connect. Uh, yeah, let's send off the board and hope it arrives soon so we can get to soldering. 
So the PCBs came back from Isla. Thanks for making these for me. Always good quality and it's fast enough for these videos. That's the main point. Uh, yeah, you can see here is the DA1600 module. This is an ESP32 S2. You could use any microcontroller for that. In practice you would use like an 80 Tiny or something. The cheapest thing that you can get with just some basic I.O. I've used this just because that's what I have in stock and you know supply issues. Uh, yeah, uh, fun fact, this doesn't work. Like it doesn't boot at all. Uh, I've already uh, tried to figure out if it's the USB port, maybe that doesn't get soldered connect uh, correctly, so I made out these breakouts, but no, I think the chips are cooked. I have probably soldered them too hot. So I'm gonna make another one and <laughs> give it another try. Hi. I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight, where we explore the world of electronics in the realm of DC, audio frequencies, RF, and into the visible spectrum of light. Here we take electrical engineering topics out of the boring old textbook and bring them into life through demonstration and test. Sometimes we even build stuff, and if there's a way to test the concept at hand, we'll put it on a scope and measure it, and in doing so, hopefully bring it to daylight. So if that sounds like a good time to you, come hang out with me every couple weeks here at Element 14 Presents. All right, see you there. Two times the charm. So I've made another one, refloat that, this time not in my toaster oven. It's done on a hot plate so I can look at it exactly to see the point where it has correctly reflown and then immediately move it off the heat so I don't burn these. The modules seem to be a bit more finicky to solder. They soak up the heat uh, so it takes a little bit longer for them to be soldered than all the other tiny components. But also if you leave them too long in the heat then they break. So use a very good solder paste for that one and keep an eye on that. Okay, now we have everything on there. Uh, let's try to boot this and do some serial talking between the MCU and the Wi-Fi module with AT commands. And as you see, uh, we only see garbage. Weird. If I just type AT and stuff, I get letters back that may be okay. Like the expected responses are okay and error or in it something. Yeah, but that doesn't look like, like it's correct. I've played around with baud rate. Turns out if you turn that to 23, 400 something, then it puts out debug data. That's a debug port. I think that that microcontroller or that, that Wi-Fi chip may have multiple UARTs that are not marked on the on the pinout. Okay, turns out I have no idea how that thing works. So I got myself the official dev kit for that module. And that is pretty neat. And it's not in here. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Just been on my bench. So this is the official dev kit for the DA1600 and as you look it's a PCIe card that's because you can plug this into a PC and basically uh, develop computer hardware that uses it with it. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, turns out this has two USB ports on it in one connector so you can switch the USB ports basically puts two on one connector. Pretty cool chip on there. But it also has two UARTs and you can like deactivate and activate them. And the port that I used for the RX and TX line, because it was marked RX and TX, is UART 0. Usually you'd say yes, 0 is the first one, the main port. But in that case, it's the debug port. So it only outputs debug information, which is actually kind of the main port because you can uh, program this module with an IDE that Orensis gives you. And so it's like super advanced stuff, but I want the basic functionality, the AT commands, because you can use them anywhere. And for that, I have to connect to the other port. And that is outputted on different pins. And if we look on the back, here are some pins and a set of them is marked RX and TX. And that's not RX and TX zero, but one. Please be a bit more consistent with the markings. That would be nice. But anyway, I've got a dev kit and now I can try out all these commands so I know what the correct responses are and how the timing is and then put that over to my board and hopefully they talk to each other. So it turns out I can now talk to this and the best thing is if you have once set your credentials for the Wi-Fi it 
it, it remembers it. It doesn't forget it. If you like save the commands once and you unplug this thing, it still knows it, which is great. So if you plug it in again, it just connects to your router in seconds. Really nice feature. Anyway, uh, this doesn't work as intended because it turns out the debug UART port is hardware UART. This thing has a pin mux, so you can basically change the functions of pins, but that's not for the debug port because it's a debug port. It should be there always and independent of any software configurations. And I have connected my MCU to the module via the debug port, which is no good. So we have to do an operation. Let's go to the operation place. Okay, a little operation or a big operation later. We have this thing here with, uh, which has a really nice uh, hot snot secured bodge on this side. Also, I have added a little read switch, which is used to get triggered by a magnet. So if you have like a door latch, uh, a closing sensor for windows, those are usually activated by magnets. You can basically stick a magnet on the door, have this module uh, be right next to it and if the door or the window closes or opens then this triggers, wakes up the Wi-Fi module that wakes up the microcontroller and then it sends me a message uh, reporting what has happened. And of course I can also, uh, if the software works that is, uh, ask it via a UDP message about its status and it should then report if the window is open or closed, which is such a cool feature. To iterate on that again, it doesn't have to wake up first. I wake it up whenever I want over the network. Oh yeah, we should have that in code. So yeah, next thing, the code. Welcome to my computer and Arduino IDE code. So. I call this dumbware just because it's not firm and it's not very smart, but it's getting the point across and it should work to test out all the stuff that I want to test out. Life is just too short to let me ramble on about code and stuff for 30 minutes or more. So we've put only the highlights of these segments in this video. And if you want to see like the full version where I explain all the stuff about the code and the board and how it works, then go on the Element 14 community and you can see the bonus videos there. Also, there is all the schematics and stuff and parts list for this available on the community as always. So maybe you want to make your own derivative, but be careful, this is like super raw in development. It looks like we have a working board and some code. Let's try it out. It's time to start trying out this thing. So here's my board, including the bodge. Just connect this via USB-C and we should see a boot up message. Yes. Okay. So we know the connection is established and it also has started a UDP server on there. And basically after these OKs, the Wi-Fi module is in sleep, which I can prove by typing AT and I get no reaction. So this is in sleep now. I can wake this up via a magnet if I find one. And you're still, yep, they're gone again. There they are. So if I put a, a magnet here, yep, there it is. Wake up with an external signal. I can't really use that signal for much now because it interferes with the serial communication because of my bodge had no other choice. And that's what every Wi-Fi module can, but what I can do now, that's the coolest thing. This is the boot up message that it took. So this is the serial communication via USB. This is Packet Sender, a tool on my computer that logs packages that are incoming and outgoing. So what I can do now is I can send a package and whoop, I've woken up the microcontroller and it has displayed this message here. And what I can do 
now is I spam these messages to keep it alive long enough for the micro uh, for the other microcontroller to wake up and do its thing. So I basically spam a few messages via UDP because some of these may get lost. And whoop, there's my response. It's device number one, this thing here. Uh, isn't that cool? Let's do it again. Spammed a few messages. And there's the response. Yes. <laughs> so, and now I disconnect this. And instead of using USB, so you can basically have the proof that it's doing it over the network and not some weird trickery. I'll put in these, these are CR2450 cells in here. Now it boots up. And here is the boot message. And if I send, now it's sleeping again, of course. If I now send it UDP commands, and spam up a few more. Come on. Yes, there it is. <laughs> and it's device number one. That's the response from this thing. And it goes back to sleep. So it can basically sleep forever, wherever you want. And if you want to know the status of your IoT device, like your alarm, your doorbell, your whatever, you just want to know how's your battery, are you operational stuff, you just send it a UDP message like this, and then it tells you, hey, I'm fine, or I need a fresh battery. Yep, there's the response. Ah, isn't that cool? <laughs> it works. Nice. Only thing is I can't go uh, further with the project in this revision because my wake-up line is taken over by the serial transmission between those two microcontrollers, so I'm always interfering with them. That means for the external wake up, I would have to make another revision and then it also works like with a magnet trigger sensor or whatever sensor you want. Basically when the sensor does something on its own, then the Wi-Fi module wakes up, wakes up the MCU and then uh, it can send data and you can ask it for data. It doesn't have to wake up periodically. Much longer battery life that way. Isn't that cool? There's the response. Let's do it again. And... There it is! <laughs> we have taken the first important steps toward a truly open source security system with a DA16200 microcontroller Wi-Fi module that allows me to ask it and wake it up over the network. No more periodical wake-ups. This could change like IoT stuff forever. I really like this module. It was pretty hard to get uh, working because I'm not familiar with these AT commands, but it's doing it. If you have ideas for all the stuff around building open source security stuff, give me your ideas on the Element 14 community. I gotta go. There's another project waiting for me.